Welcome back to Valley Moves and Shakers. Once again, I'm Kevin Little, and we're going to get started with our first guest. Our first guest today is a Valley Mover and Shaker who operates the Black Tie Limousine Company. Welcome to the show, Mr. Waller. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. So uh, why don't you explain to our viewers, what's your connection to the Valley? Uh, my connection to the Valley is I moved here probably about in 1992. I moved here after I uh, got a job with the Department of Corrections. And I started with the Department of Corrections uh, in uh, Delano, California. And um, from there, that's what brought me from, from Southern California. Okay, and so you've stayed. So you've been here twenty, going on 26 years. Yes. All right. So that's obviously you were in a different career, working in corrections. And I'm assuming you... Retired. retired from there, and yes. then you went into uh, other business ventures. Is that correct? Yes, yes. All right. Um, I was also in the Air Force, uh, Standard Reserve, Air Force Reserve. I stayed for 25 years, and uh, after I retired from corrections, I realized that uh, there's more to do. Than I didn't want to just do it, not do nothing. You know, my retirement is pretty good. You know, I, I'm I'm doing pretty well for myself, but I realized that I wanted to do more still. So. Instead of uh, going out working for somebody, I realized that I had the aptitude to start my own business, so I started my own business, driving limousines. Well, you know, I'm going to think about what someone in your position might have at least thought or had someone close to them say. You know, you've got a great retirement. Uh, you can play it safe and, and live well and, and not take these risks, not reinvest money that you've already earned from your first career into something that's risky. Did, you, did people tell you that sort of thing? That's exactly what I did, too. You know, right. I, I, uh, when I, uh, because I went to work all the time, timely, and I did everything, I, was, I went to work. So I, I cashed in some of my, uh, my vacation time that I had saved up, and they paid us, they, ca they cashed us out for it. So anyway. You know, it's a little bit of a little bit of money, so I used some of that money to pay for the investment, the initial investment of purchasing the vehicles and things like that. And you're right, uh, a lot of people wonder, well, why are you spending so much money doing this when you can just relax? And uh, there's more to life. There's more to offer. I wanted to. Uh, when one guy told me, I kid you not, when one man told me, one of my mentors, I was telling him, he's asking me, why did I do the business? I said, you know, I want to do something that I enjoy, something that I kind of something that I want to do. And he looked at me. He said, that's the wrong reason. He said, if you're not in this to build something for your, for your family that you can pass on, build something to build, uh, if you're not trying to better yourself and better your family in the things you do, you don't do something just because you like it. If you enjoy what you're doing why you're building something for your family, that's a win-win. He said, but you should be in this, you should be in this not because you like it, but because you want to make something and build something for your family. Right, so. and so that was that was the goal. And yes. uh, approximately, what year was that when you decided to to pursue uh, transportation and and providing transportation service? That was uh, 2016. Okay, 2016. I All retired right. in 2015. Took the first year off, riding my motorcycle, going every place, just doing whatever I wanted to do. And then in 2016, I was going to go out, get a job, doing. Um, it's kind of specialized in what I did because I kind of specialized when I worked for Department of Corrections. I had a you know a skill set that I could have easily gotten a job outside, very easy got a job making very good money, but then I, I realized that you know what there's more to this and I could possibly make even more money than what I was making for there. So right because that's what I did. you know some of the normal career paths that uh, f folks who retire from law enforcement take they uh, go into private security, private investigations. Um, things of that nature, right. um, and and you decided to do something that was quite a departure from from the area that you had been in before. Exactly. What I was doing was I was a uh, I was a compliance, uh, uh, compliance court compliance uh, officer for Department of Corrections. So my specialty was ADA Americans with Disabilities Act. So I would go around teaching classes to the various different institutions, teaching staff members about how to make sure that we're in compliance with the court. So. Knowing that the, uh, the, the, um, those, those type of lawsuits were going into the counties and the cities as well, I knew that I could easily sell myself, sell my skill set to the counties or to the cities and let them know that I could help them stay out of the courts like I have helped our institutions get out, of the, get out of the lawsuits that we've been in. So that's something that you know, I could have done it, but I realized that I want to do something else that I want to do, build something that I can pass on to my family. I know if I did that, 
that's something that I have to leave behind. But this one I'm doing right now, I can pass on. Now, you started your business uh, in 2016, but I'm suspecting that the dream that started long before then, the idea that ended up being the black tie limos, is that yes. right? Yes. When did that get started? Ooh, that was a very long time ago, probably in 80s and then probably early 80s, 70s, probably early 80s. And what, what interested you in the personal transportation services field at that time? Um, well, I was, in the, I was brand new in the Air Force. Brand new in the Air Force, and uh, you know, and just seeing you know the types of vehicles and, and seeing what what people are doing, I'm like, you know, that be, might be something nice that I like to try one day. And you know, I, I actually did get a job, and I was doing it back then. But I had a I had a responsibility. I had a family, kids. It wasn't paying very well. It wasn't reliable at the time. I didn't have. I sure couldn't go out and start my own business at the time. So what I did was I chose to stick with my military career and CC until a I got to I got a, a good foundation for myself, and then I decided to pursue the uh, limousine business. Okay, now can you give us an idea of how your business has developed and grown since you started it? Wow. Okay. Well, it, it has grown quite a bit. Um, you know, one of the things that I've that I've learned is uh, customer customer service. Um, you know, providing uh, making people feel that uh, that it's their vehicle when when, when they're utilizing the vehicles. Um, and being uh, timely, um, uh, it's been hard. I, I, it's not been easy. I tell you that right, right now. It's not been easy because you know coming into this this new career field. I mean, coming to this, and I had not done this in the Central Valley at all, and I didn't know anybody. So I tried to reach out to some of the companies that are actually doing it. They were kind of hesitant about helping me out a little bit because they was kind of taking money out of their pocket. Kind of they, that's right. the way some of these people feel. So I went out and to the other cities, to the bigger cities, and to talk to mentors out there. And they've helped me develop a business plan and things like that. And I've grown quite, I'm, I'm doing okay so far. I'm Sounds right. good. Sounds good. Now, you know, you started out with uh, a, a, a few uh, two, units? Two vehicles. Two vehicles? Yes. And how about now? I have four. Okay. And you're based in the South Valley, correct? In uh, Visalia. In yes. Visalia. Yes. And what's kind of your service area? Uh, we go over. We, we go any place. Uh, uh, we have uh, some uh, Mercedes Sprinter limos now. Uh, we have right. a Mercedes Sprinter limo and a Mercedes Sprinter shuttle. So we can go any place our customers desire, any place we want to go. I've taken customers to uh, Las Vegas, uh, San Diego, Long Beach. Um, one, some families wanted to go to Disneyland. They wanted to... They wanted me to take them to Disneyland. They wanted to start the vacation early, take them down to visit Disneyland. Right. And I went down there and picked them back. So uh, we've been taking some people to San Francisco for some customers. Okay. So you you go uh, wh wherever your the client wants to go or needs yes. to go. Yes. You'll do it. Yes. Okay. So uh, so you've got uh, two limos and uh, two sprinters. What what yes. are, and sprinters are the luxury vans? Is that what yeah. they are? Yeah. So uh, the Mercedes uh, Sprinter Sprinter limos. Uh, well, Mercedes Sprinter limo and Mercedes Sprinter van. Um, they're the, they're the the vehicles that's kind of they use use more in the, uh, in the in the bigger cities. You know, Los Angeles and San Francisco. There's a few companies here, and and that's one of the reasons why I did purchase uh, them because. Not too, many, not too many companies around here have them because they're very expensive. They're, they're like $100,000 vehicles and stuff. So, um, but they're very comfortable, especially going on like wine tours and things like that. You can actually stand up. Um, very nice vehicle. Very nice. Very comfortable. It has TV, Wi-Fi. has all that stuff inside there. So, you know, on a regular, regular limo, you're sitting down and, you know, because, you know, as human beings, we're social beings. You know, we like right. to interact with each other and stuff like that. So if we're in a limo, we're right here and other people are sitting way over there. Well, as a, in a sprinter limo, Everyone's all facing each other and, you know, real close. So very nice vehicle, very comfortable. So what's the goal moving forward? Goal forward is uh, I actually want to get um, uh, two more vehicles. So I'm, I, I've, I've take, taken note of this last year of the vehicles that people are requesting. Uh, I know what it is I need, and okay. I will have it by the end of this year. Okay. So I can fulfill that void, and um, I will continue to grow. I take uh, like a uh, one guy told me. Uh, he said, uh, uh, "Crawl, walk, run." And that's what go. I'm doing. So right now, I'm I'm walking still. I'm I'm not running just yet, but I'm just walking. And right. sounds like you want to keep your future plans under a little bit of wraps. And I I respect and understand that because yes. you know some of your competitors could be watching. Yes. There yes. you go. Yes, they are. There you go. <laughs> yes. so you, 
you're, you're, you're definitely in entrepreneur mode. That's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. So let's say that someone, and, and there might be someone out there who's watching you, who's thinking, you know, maybe they've retired from a long time career such as you did. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they have a dream to pursue it, but they just don't maybe have the, the confidence or just, they haven't seen anybody do what they've done. What's some good advice that you think you can offer to someone who is perhaps where you were in 2014, 2015? Right. Um, my recommendation to them was if it's something that they want to do, just go do it. Don't let someone tell them that you can't do it. You, you're going to always have people, because most people take the safe route when they're going about doing things. They want to take the, 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 the easiest way to be able to go to wherever they need to do. Um, and, and not take chances, not take risks. Um, if you don't take a risk, you, you can't get no rewards out of it. So it, it, to me, it's worth the risk. If you want to try something, try it. If you fail, get back up, try it again, dust yourself off, try it again. Okay. So some people might think, you know, uh, having a, a limousine uh, company is, you know, maybe not as much work as, as you can probably tell them it actually is. They, maybe they think, oh, you're just kind of on cue, just waiting to uh, for somebody to to call you up asking for services. But there's a lot, lot more to it than that, isn't there? Yes, there's a lot of things going behind the scene. And, and I tell you, the, the hardest thing that I've learned, what I'm dealing with right now, the hardest thing is finding people that want to come to work. <laughs> I tell you, that's the hardest part. It's right. just trying to find people, qualified people, people that have the same passion or same vision. It's somebody that's going to actually, because they're going to be out there driving a limousine, working for my company. You're going to be out representing my brand. So if you're going to be out there talking and interacting with the customers, I want you to represent me in a very positive way. And having some people, talking to people, some some folks, when they respond to, uh, you know, applying for jobs for me, they uh, no interact, no social skills whatsoever. You know, they, they don't. How can I say it? Uh, they just don't have the qualifications. Or they, they don't even show up. They don't even show up timely. One guy sh was supposed to have been there at 11 o'clock. Right. He was supposed to be there at 11 o'clock. He called me at 12. Oh. Well, 11, 12, what's the difference? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Looking for a job. <laughs> Looking for a job. You okay. Know what I mean? so, so, I mean, there's probably, I'm, I'm pretty sure, at least one or two people who are looking for a job. You know, and we and I don't want to, you know, get too preachy, but top three tips. If somebody is coming to apply for a job, you as an employer, what do you look for? One, uh, to be timely. Okay, be on time. Be on time. All right. Th that's one thing. Two. Um, the appointment's for eight, not eight-ish. Right. Okay. Right, exactly, exactly. All the, right. The other thing is uh, don't come with pants on the ground. Don't come... You know, come properly dressed. Come like you represent yourself. You just right. understand that it, whatever employer, whatever job it is, right. you know, you got to dress the part. You know, you got to let them know that you're you're going to be representing them. Whatever job it is, may be, wherever it's going to be at, but you're going to be representing that company. You're going to be right. that ambassador. So you need to be dressed appropriately for that, for that, right. uh, for that. And also to have a little background about the job. You know, no, kind of know about what type of uh, work you're going to be doing. Uh, that's going to kind of be expected of you, so you can go prepared and let them know what you have to to make that person want to hire you at that one on the spot. So basically, be on time, look ready, and do your research. Yes, sir. All right. Fantastic. Well, uh, Marshall, we wish you the very best of luck moving forward, and thank you so much for being on uh, Valley Movers and Shakers. Thank we you. hope to have you back again sometime. Well, well, I hope to come back sometime. Now, if they do need to rent a limo, please don't right. forget. That's right. Oh, I was going to give you, because we. this is how we finish with all our guests. Okay. You know, anything else you want to tell anybody out there watching? Well, if you do need a limo, please give, uh, give us a chance. Uh, give me a chance to sell myself to you. My uh, Our website is uh, theblacktielimos.com. The phone number is 559-559. Uh, Six nine seven five four six six. Perfect. The black tie limos, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any transportation needs, you couldn't do better. And now you've seen the the face of the company, so you know you'd be in good hands. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back after these messages.